morning, everybody. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our Wednesday night time of study um, in the word of the Lord. I pray that everybody is well, and I pray that you have had an absolutely amazing day. Go ahead and make sure you are liking, tagging, and sharing. Make sure somebody knows that um, we are getting ready to study the word of the Lord. As we speak, I am adding it to my page, and I hope that you have done the same because we never want to hoard all of the goodness to ourselves. We want to make sure that somebody else is able to partake of what I believe the Lord is saying to this house. And I believe that he is speaking in the earth. So make sure you're liking, tagging and sharing. Thank you so much for those of you that are already doing so. Good evening, Starsha and Tanya. Good evening, Maria and Miss Wanda. Good evening, Melissa. Good evening, Darlene. Good evening, Tevin. Good evening, Miss Nisi and Vivian and Natalie. Good evening, Miss Charlotte and Sharita. Good evening, Doris. Good evening, Sheila Gaines over there in the YouTube church. Good evening, Jane Taylor. Good evening, uh, Marianne and Trina and Barbara and Miss Riola. Good evening, Mildred and Leroy and Miss Yvonne and Charles Ann and Beverly. Good evening. Good evening, Deacon Williams and Doreen. Good evening, Reverend Iris. Good evening, Teresa Barber. Good evening, everybody. Deborah Nichols and uh, Pamela Graham. Thank you all so much. Thank you all so much for chiming in and being on time and just being uh, a part of our time in the word together. Listen, we're going to get ready to jump right in. Um, I pray again that you have liked tagged or shared. If you say, well, I don't know anybody to share with, just hit those hearts, hit those hearts in advance because we're praising God in advance for the word. And so again, we're thankful for those on YouTube. We're thankful for those on Facebook and for those who are on our conference call line. Angela Sattler, I see you chiming in over there in the YouTube church and Lisa Fuller just came in and Miss Pat Williams. All right, let's get ready to jump in right quick. Let's pray. Father in Jesus name, Thank you, Father, for just allowing us to come together one more time. Dear God, we ask that you will speak to our hearts. We ask, oh God, that you will show us ourselves in the word of the Lord, that we may be better, that we may do better, that we may grow. Father, I just pray now that you will crucify all flesh, allow no flesh to be seen, but let your glory be revealed. Speak to me, speak through me, speak to us, oh God, you get the glory out of all of it. In Jesus name, amen. And amen. Again, I am so, so, so very thankful for those of you that are chiming in with us tonight. Thank you so much once again. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter tonight. 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, and we're building a foundation as we are beginning a new uh, I'll say a continuation of um, our study of last month. We're continuing on from a different perspective, though. Last month, we were talking about building from the construction um, mindset, you know, building a building and building on to what God is, has done for us and through us um, as, a, as a body of believers at Emmanuel. But tonight, we're going to go a little bit further and we're going to be a little bit more personal personal in this building process. And so those of you that can and will go with me to 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verses 4 through 6. And I'm just reading that for context um, tonight. Um, I have a lot of reading that I'm going to do. So keep your word handy, whether you paper Bible paper Bible saved <laughs> or you have your devices, whatever the case may be, keep them handy. All right. 1 Corinthians 12, verse four through six. And it says, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. And I'll stop reading there. As I said, I'll read a little bit more later, but I'll stop reading there. And so tonight, I just want to ask the question, are you a team player? 
Yeah, I need you to ask somebody down your timeline. Are you a team player? Yeah, we're we're talking this month about um, building a team or building uh, building a team building, if you will. And so you got to ask yourself, are you a team player? Because if we're going to build a team, we got to have people who are willing to join in the games. <laughs> We got to have people who are willing to be a part of the team. So ask somebody down the timeline, are you a team player? Um, I was thinking today, you remember, I don't know if many of you remember when we were growing up and we were getting ready, you know, we would be on the playground and we were getting ready um, for, to play a game, say, of kickball or a game of we play softball. You know, you know, you would have two team captains and and each captain would have to choose who would be on their team and they would alternate choosing from, uh, it could be family, it could be friends, it could be, you know, neighbors, but every team captain would choose who they wanted on their team. And everybody knew, you know, depending on who the team captain was, you knew you wanted to be on that particular team. So if you were the captain, you did all you could to make sure that you would stack your team to make sure, you know, you stack the odds in your favor. You would make sure that you had speed on your team or you had power on your team. You, you made sure you had somebody on the team that didn't throw their back. Y'all remember that, you know, it's like watch out for her because she's going to throw the bat, you know, or watch out for him. He's going to go long or watch out for him. He's going to punt or whatever the case may be. So you made sure you got, you know, you didn't want the cousin that was too slow. You know, you didn't want the uncle that that you knew had already had a little bit too much to, to drink. You know, you made sure you had the one that you knew for sure was going to be able to bring you the win. You you made sure you had at the right ones on the team um, as they go into the game, you know, to, to come out on the winning side in the end. And the thing about being chosen, there are a couple of emotions that go on while the choosing is going on. Y'all remember those days, you'd be so nervous because you didn't want the wrong one to choose you, or you would be so nervous that you would be the last one to be chosen. You know, you would feel special. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, you would feel special. You know, you would feel privileged if you got chosen first, because that said to everybody, oh, you know, yeah, she the one, she the one that everybody wanted on their team because you got chosen first. Or so then there was a sense of Pride, you know, whenever the, the 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 captain would choose you, especially if that captain was known for being on a winning team, you you take pride because you know they have connect. You've connected with somebody that could possibly help you be on the winning side. That can help you obtain victory. But then, when you are on the team of someone that is not athletically inclined, there's a weight of responsibility that overcomes you. And, and now if your team has a chance of winning, you got to push up your sleeves and work hard for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you already know you got to put in the work. You already know, you know, that you got a hard way to go if you got on a particular team. And, you know, this may be a day where it's too hot. You don't feel like all of that, you know, but you're trying to be a team player. And at the end of the day, y'all, that's pretty much our attitude in life. That's that's pretty much our attitude. Even if the if the truth really be told, that's our attitude in ministry. We want to make sure we want to have a chance to win, but we want to make sure we got the right ones on our team. We want to make sure that we've connected ourselves with winners. You know, we don't want to work too hard. <laughs> we don't want to be the only one working. We don't want to be the only one. That, we don't want to be the one that everybody is counting on to bring us the win. You know, we want to be on a good 
team. Come on. How many know, how many just want to be on a good team? You don't want anybody hindering you. You don't want anybody slowing you down. You don't want anybody, you know, you got to pull across the finish line. You want to be on a winning team. And then you know as well as I do that everybody wants to be the one to win. Nobody wants to lose. You want to be on the winning side. But teams just don't win because they desire to win. Teams just don't win because they got power hitters or they got um, strong runners. They, they don't win just because they got all the talent. They win because they know how to really work together. Uh, I, I need you to hear me. They play their part. They play their role. They play their position. They monopolize and focus on each other's strengths. You know, for those of you that remember how to play softball, you know, you, you put your strong hitters in the lineup when you need somebody to bring them in for the home run. You know, you know, you, you put, you may put your bunners up, for, up first, you know, you, you put the ones that can at least get on the base. You know, but you put your strong hitters at number four. That's going to bring them all in. You know, we, we everybody has to be able to play their part. And whether you realize it or not, that's what we are called to do within the body of Christ. We are called to use what God has given us to work as a team for the sole purpose of building up the kingdom of God edifying the body of Christ, strengthening the body of Christ, if you will. We are called to, to join in on the team so that the body wins. I didn't say so that the individual wins, so that the body wins. Come on, tell somebody down the timeline, the body needs a win. Come on. I need you to I need you to announce it down your timeline. The body needs a win because the way this body of Christ and I'm not talking about the Baptist church or the Kojic church or the Presbyterian church. I'm talking about the body of Christ, the body of believers. We need a win because there is so much controversy. There is so much division. There is so much, you know, um things now that are entering into the knowledge of people. People are gaining knowledge from here, there, and the other. And then you got the body of Christ. You got people who are in leadership, amen, whose names are always in the news and whose names are always across social media in a negative light. And they are a part of the body, whether you want to accept it or not. And so therefore, those of us who have the mindset to win and those of us who have the mindset to play our part, we got to join forces so that the body can continue to win. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so this month we want to work on building teams to give the body a win. Yeah. Yeah. We want to work on building teams who will, who will equip and help the, to build the body of Christ. There, there, there was a slogan that Dr. Pack uses within the Jordan partnership that says one is too small of a number to achieve greatness. I need you to, I need you to let that soak in. One is too small of a number to achieve greatness. It takes a team to build. Yes, there are some things that I can do and do accomplish on my own. But when a team of like-minded people are working together to achieve the same goal, great things are bound to happen. Those of you, you know, if you're on social media and, and you're scrolling through, you see that you see say folk acting up. You you see say folk in negative, you know, comments. You you see say supposedly say folk, Holy Ghost feel folk who are being talked about in a negative light. You see pastors and bishops names on the news. Yeah, yeah. So 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 the body of believers, glory to God, has got to come together as a team so that the so that we can continue to build up this body so that the so that the non believer can see that there's still a remnant of us who are trying to get a win for for Christ 
but they're non-believers who who need to see that there are still some team players. There 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 are some non-believers that that's that's on the opposite side of the fence looking in. They need to see a team working together. They need to see that there are a remnant of believers who still want to see Christ be the head and 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 the and the savior and the keeper of our souls. Yeah. So 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 tonight um we begin this this series on team building. Now when you look at the acronym for team there is an acronym for team and I'm going to show you um that acronym that we're going to be using over the course of the month. Together everyone a achieves more. Together everyone achieves more. I need you to put that in the timeline. Together, everyone achieves more. That's our acronym for team. Together, every, it didn't say I, it said everyone. It didn't say me because I'm the pastor. It said everyone <laughs> achieves more. But the problem with us, we want to add an I to that word. But tell somebody there's no I in team. You know, we would always hear that when we were in school. You know, there's there's no I in team, you know, but but there are simply some things that are going to be accomplished as a team. Even Jesus knew that he, he was God in the flesh. He was able to do exceeding abundantly above. I need y'all to get this. But he chose a team. He was God in the flesh on earth, but he chose a team. He chose disciples to help him work the work. I, I, need, I need you to grab this. I need you to wrap your mind around this. When, when he began to give the disciples instructions on how to go out and do ministry, he told them to make sure they go out, what? Two by two, go out in teams. He wanted to make sure they had each other's back. He wanted to make sure they supported each other as a team. Amen. When, when he ascended to heaven, he left the Holy Spirit with us to empower us with gifts to use as a team. Yeah. Yeah. He, there are various places throughout scripture that we find instructions on working together, working as a team, working as the body of Christ. We don't see a lot of individualism. Yeah, it's teamwork. There is a former UCLA basketball coach by the name of John Wooden that said that once said individuals win trophies, but teams win championships. Come on, I need somebody that 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 follows sports to really grab that. It's individuals that win trophy, trophies, but there are but teams win championships. You don't see a basketball player winning the championship. He may be the VIP of the game. He may get a trophy as the VIP, but the whole team wins the championship. There's no room for individualism. Tell somebody it's got to be teamwork. It's got to be teamwork. Yeah. And what I see a lot of times is that you have individual people working for a trophy when we as a team should be striving for the championship. Yeah, we have individual people who are working to be seen. We got individual people who are working to have their name called out. We're, we have individual people who are working to get their pat on the back and the certificate at the end of the year. But when we really should be striving for the championship. Now, don't get me wrong. Everybody wants to be recognized for doing good. Everybody wants to be appreciated for, for serving well. Everybody, you know, I, you know, nobody, you know, wouldn't would not give back a VIP trophy. Come on here, because that says I've done good work. But at the end of the day, we've got to strive for the big win. And that's so that God can be glorified. And we, but we will never win as a team. We will never get to that place of championship status if we don't learn how to play together. Are, are you, are you hearing me? Yeah. If, if we don't learn how to get on one accord, if we don't learn how to put our individual, individual stuff to the side and play the game as a team, 
And we gotta get we gotta get beyond having several teams. You know, there's no league here. It's one team. <laughs> Come on, I just said something. You know how it is when you got a league, you got several teams that are that are competing within themselves, that are working together and competing within themselves. Yeah, we don't have a league, we got one team. Yeah, it's it's not the older generation and the younger generation and the and the young adults and and the Z generation and the millennials. It's it's not a league of people. It's a team. Yeah, we are all one team. We just got to figure out how to give everybody some playing time. And I'm, I'm I'm talking better than y'all talking back. Come on. Yeah, we just got to figure out how to put the right people in place so that we all come out on the winning side. It's not my team against your team and 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 their team against their team. And then then a few of us come together and play the champ. No, it's all one team. And we got one objective. And that's to get that's to get the win, not for ourselves, but for Jesus Christ. Ephesians four. Ephesians 4 and 16. I hope this is making sense to somebody. Ephesians 4 and 16, the New Living Translation says, he makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Come on. He, <laughs> he, he calls his every part to do its own work, not for recognition, but so that the other parts grow. So I got to do my part so that you can grow. You've got to do your part so that those that you're teaching can grow, so that those that you're leading can grow, so that those that you're ministering to can grow, so that you can take it on your job and the people who are listening to you can grow because of what you have been endowed with. And so that the whole body is healthy and growing. And whether you want to admit it or not, our destinies are tied to each other. Our growth is tied to each other. And I truly believe that God has ordained it to be just that way. I got something that you need. You have something that I need. I may have the vision, but you have the knowledge and the gifting to carry it out. I may have the words to the book but you got the skill and the time to write it. <laughs> you may have the dream, but the very one that you're trying to avoid may have the money or the connections to finance your dream. I'm telling you, we've got to do this thing together. That, that's why you got to be careful how you treat folk. And you got to be careful how you handle people because you never know who you're going to need to help you win. You never know who you're going to need to help your team win. You never know who can ultimately end up being the VIP because you do understand that just because you're the captain, that don't always make you the VIP. <laughs> just because you're the captain, just because you're one that's got the title, just because you're the one that everybody knows the name, that doesn't say that you're the strongest one on the team. That doesn't say that you're the one that has all the skill. That doesn't say that you're the one that you're the one that always have, you know, the greatest gift. You may have the title, but you need the players on the team to get you to a win. Yeah. So that's why you got to be careful how you handle people because they just may have the goods you need to get you all to a place of victory. Amen, somebody. And so that brings me to um, our scripture tonight that we read earlier found in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. And in your, in your, your personal time, I want you to read that entire chapter. Um, e, uh, e, not only that chapter, but Ephesians 4, as well as 1 Corinthians 12. But 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 6, again, it says, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. Yeah. In other words, a good team possesses a variety of gifts, a variety of positions, but they pursue the same goal. 
I need you to hear me. Let me say that again. A good team possesses a variety of gifts, but they pursue the same goal because they're serving the same God. Yeah, we don't all have to do the same thing. We don't all have to do the, the same thing the same way, but we all, you know, are, have to be working toward the same goal. We don't, for, for the ministers, I'll tell them in a minute, you don't have to preach the way I preach. You, you don't have to serve the way I, saw, I serve, but we all should be trying to accomplish the same thing. There's no need for copycats. Tell somebody down your timeline, don't be a copycat. Yeah, don't. there's no need for copycats because verse number seven says, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so that we can help each other. It didn't say so we can get the most money. It didn't say so we can get the most recognition. He said so that we can help each other. I've got something that you need that's that's special to me. That's that's significant for me. I got my form, my my ability, my gift, my grace, my call. That but that doesn't say yours is less. It's just you got yours just like I got mine. I've I've told you many times you can't copycat what you see everybody doing cuz you don't have the grace for what everybody is doing. God has given me a grace for what I do. That's why I'm able to do it the way I do it. Just as he's given you a grace to do what you do. It's the same way. It's the, it's the, you know, when it comes to gifts, it's that way across the board. You have a grace to, I'll say cook, you know, though there's some of you on this timeline, you know, you, you can beat Betty Crocker cooking. Now that ain't my that ain't my grace. Now I can get by. Don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. Trust me, I can do what I do, but I may not have the grace that you have. And I need you to understand everybody has been given a certain level of grace to do what you do in order to help the whole body grow. Yeah. We we and we seem to forget that what we have, we have it in order to help somebody else, not to just because if it's, you know, if it's two heads, it's a monster. So it's only got it's only one, it's only gonna be one if one head. If it's three hands, you got a you got a for real deformity. I don't if, if this hand and this hand is enough on this body. I need you to hear me. That's why when the Lord, when the Lord made us, you know, if you go and study, you know, even with twins, even twins don't have the same fingerprints. They may have the same blood flowing, <laughs> but they don't have the same fingerprints. There's going to be a little something off in the DNA. Everybody got something different. And we forget that. A team is not about us as individuals. It's about us using what we have to work for the greater good. Amen, somebody. You have your grace. I have mine. And we have to put it all together for the greater good of Christ Jesus. Yeah, everybody is unique. And don't, everybody, and, and don't look down on your uniqueness because yours don't look like somebody else. You're unique for what he has you to do just as well as I'm unique for what he has me to do. And when we put it all together and come together as one body, when we come together as one team, God gets the glory out of that. And at the end of the day, that has to be our goal. That has to be our goal. All right, back in um, 1 Corinthians 12, verse eight through 10 says, to one person, the spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another the same spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same spirit gives great faith to another. And to someone else, the one spirit gives, to one spirit, he gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the spirit of God or from another spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. Again, this is the language of teamwork. I, I need you to 
I need you to listen to what Paul is teaching. He's teaching us the language of teamwork. One is gifted to give good advice, while another one is gifted to give a word of knowledge that comes straight from the father. All right. So, 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 so I may give you good advice, but there may be a prophet to come and give you a word of knowledge. He's telling you, or she's telling you what thus saith the Lord for your life right then and right there. It's not an opinion. It's not advice. It's the word of the Lord, but both are necessary because because the advice that I'm giving you is coming from a place of, of experience. I can tell you, I've been through that. This is what, this is what happened with me. I had that particular experience. This is how I handled it. But then somebody else can come with a word of knowledge and says, but this is what the father says. It doesn't make my advice less than because my advice is, is necessary for you to know the realistic side. This is what's going to happen when you go to the doctor. This is what's going to happen when you have to go to, to the court system. This is what's going to happen when you need to apply for that job. Okay. And then somebody with the word of knowledge will say, but don't get weary because you do understand that the door is opening for you and God is going to grant you the desires of your heart in not many days from now, you shall see the glory of the Lord. That could be that word of knowledge that's coming forth from the father, but I'm giving you the practical side of it. Once again, just because somebody comes and says, thus said the Lord, don't make my advice null and void. Come on, I need y'all to talk back to me here. You got to understand that it all works together. And then he goes on to say, then somebody has a gift of healing while somebody else can perform various other miracles. Just because you can perform signs and wonders, that doesn't take away from the fact that I'm able to lay hands on the sick and they recover. Come on. It's all needed. Then he says, then another player comes on the team and has the gift of prophecy. But to make sure things stay in order, there's another one who has the right to discern if, if the prophecy is from God or if it's from another spirit. We talked about discernment just recently. It's not somebody giving you their opinion. It is a spiritual gift of discernment that allows you to, to, to understand if this is from God or if it's from another spirit. Because you do know that we still got soothsayers who, are, who will disguise themselves as prophets of God and they are prophets of Baal. That's another story for a whole nother day. Amen. But, but <laughs> Lord have mercy. But then, you know, you got to understand that, that it is needed. It, the prophetic is needed in the body of Christ, but you also need folk around you that can discern if that's God or is that somebody's flesh? Come, come on, come on, you know, and then, and then, you know, he said, he goes on to say, um, there are those who have the gift of speaking in unknown languages, and then there are others who have the ability to interpret what is being said. Yeah, these are all works of the spirit, and they all work in conjunction and in connection with one another. That goes back to my point. Don't be trying to copycat because you got to make sure that the body is in order. And if you copycatting, you copycatting something you have no knowledge of. And now everything, now you're operating in error and the body is operating out of order. I, I hope you hear me. It is teamwork and God has structured the gifts to operate together as a team. But when we refuse to get in the game or when we are trying to play somebody else's position, we mess up everything. Tell somebody down your timeline, don't mess it up. Come on, tell somebody down your timeline, don't mess it up. You know, you, you <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're either refusing to get on the game or when you do get in the game, you trying to play somebody else's position and you getting ready to mess up everything. You're, you got to play your position. If you're called the pitch, you can't be over here on first base too. 
If you are called to be in the outfield, amen, you can't run up into the infield because when somebody hits that to the outfield, you're not going to be in good God Almighty. You're not going to be in place and you're not going to be in position to call that thing out. Lord, help me talk in here. Yeah. Yeah. If 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 you want to you want to sit on the bench and be in the background and you know you're called to be up front, you're called to be on the front line. But because you are dealing with your own insecurities and you're dealing with your own flesh, you are choosing, you are opting to sit this one out. You are making the choice. You are making the personal decision not to be on the Lord's side. Come on here and be on your own side and sit this one out. And what you are doing, you are leaving somebody uncovered. You are out of position and you are hindering the progress and the growth and the success of the team. Good God Almighty. And if that is you tonight, I am sounding the alarm. I am calling you back in the game so that we can get to work. Come on, tell somebody, get back in the game so we can go to work. Come on, come on. And I know you saying, I know you saying, but I don't, you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't do it like them. And, you know, I'm not as experienced as them. And, you know, I got hurt the last time I was in the game. Come on. I failed the last time I was in the game. You know, somebody came at me wrong the last time I was in the game. But but you got to understand that that this is a different ending. Oh, glory to God. This is a different season that we're in. Come on. You can't use the fact that you got hurt in the last game. You can't use the fact that somebody hurt you, you know, and you hit your head in the last game. You can't Good God Almighty, you can't use the excuse that in the that was the last game, that was the last season. I thought, you know, we had a two year break, y'all, and God has called us back on the field, and we gotta forget those things that are behind us, and we gotta get back in the game and reach toward those things which are before. Paul said, I press toward the mark. Good God Almighty, I need somebody to let the last season be the last season. Come on, tell somebody down your timeline, let the last season be the last season. This is a different season now. Yeah, we have entered into another, another, another level of game. We have entered into another level of ministry. We have entered into another level of service. We have entered into another level of team building. Yeah, you was on that team for that season, but now God is calling you to another. Yeah. And I hear you. I don't, I don't play like them and I don't, I don't do it like them. I don't sing like them. I don't teach like them. I don't, I don't, I don't have what they have, but, but, but hear me, hear me, hear me. Everybody got a part to play. Everybody got a part to play this in the season. You got to remember that the team members have to function like, like the organs and the muscles of our body. Come on, let's go back to scripture. No part is less important than the other. In fact, sometimes the players who seem less important are actually more important. Come on, remember the analogy I just gave you. Just because you're not the captain of the team doesn't, ma doesn't mean that you can't be the VIP of the team. Yeah, and so sometimes we treat the players who, who we think are less important, but they are actually more important. That's what Paul is saying in verses 14 through 26. It's a little bit of reading. So y'all hang in here with me. Verses 14 through 26 of first Corinthians 12. He says, yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says I'm not a part of the body because I'm not the hand, that does not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear says I'm not a part of the body because I'm not an eye, would that make it any less a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? <laughs> if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? Our bodies have many parts and God has put each part just where he wants it. He put every play, every, every player just where he wants them. He says, how strange a body would be if, 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 if it had only one part. 
How strange would a team be if it only had a pitcher? Yeah, how strange would a team be if it only had an outfielder? Yeah, he says, yes, there are many parts, but one body that I can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can never say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen while the more honorable parts do not require the special care. So God has put the body together such that extra honor and care are given to those parts that that has less dignity. This makes for harmony among the members so that all the members care for one another. If one part suffers, all of the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all parts are glad. The body works together. If my stomach hurt, my whole body hurt. If I hit my toe in the middle of the night, I'm going to holler because my whole body hurts. If I hit my elbow, my whole body, if I bite my tongue, everything in me goes into shock. Come on. Yeah. You may think because these parts are insignificant, they are still a part of your body. And if one hurt, all of it's going to hurt. So in other words, we win as a team, but we lose as a team as well. And so we got to make sure we're doing our part to win, not just for ourselves, but for the whole team. God's goal is actually team harmony. Yeah, I need you to put that in the timeline. God's goal is team harmony. God's goal for us is unity in the spirit, if you want to be biblical. That's his goal for us, to have unity in the spirit and mutual care for one another. And I just want to encourage somebody tonight and remind you that God wants you on his team. Yeah, it's time for you to jump in and make yourself available. It's time for you to get in position so that we can all obtain the victory. Listen, don't continue to sit on the sideline because last season didn't work. Don't, don't continue to sit on the sideline because somebody stepped on your toe. Come on. Don't continue to sit on the, on the sideline because you didn't get the home run you wanted to get in the end. You didn't because you wanted to get a home run, but you only were able to get for so far before you got, you know, called out. <laughs> yeah. You, you got to get back in the game and make yourself available again, because listen, he has called you to this team for a reason. He didn't call you to sit on the sideline. He, he didn't call you just to, to, just to be in the stands and talk and jump. Because, you know, some of us don't like to do nothing but go sit in the stands and holler and hoop and talk a whole lot of trash. He didn't call you to sit in the stands in this one. He called you to be a team player. Yeah, you got to know that. You got to know he's chosen you for the purpose of doing great things for him in the kingdom. In Ephesians 2 and 10. Ephesians 2 and 10, it says, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do good things he planned for us long ago. God already had plans for us before the world was even framed. He intentionally placed gifts within us because he knew the position that we were going to have to play. He knew the parts that we were going to have to play. He knew where we were going to be needed in the body of Christ. I'm not talking about in the church. I'm talking about in the body of Christ. Yeah. So, so we've got to get off the sideline. He's calling us back into the game. He's calling us back to play our part. And for those of you who've had to play two and three positions, I already hear you. I see you on the sideline jumping. I see you in the game telling me, come on, coach, take me out. I already see you. I see you saying, I'm tired. Take me out, coach. I need a break, coach. Take me out. I need some water, coach. I hear you already on the sidelines telling me, come on, coach. I've been in here long enough. Get somebody else in this game or call it. No, 
Don't get weary in well-doing. That's the word of the Lord tonight for you. For those of you that have had to play two and three positions, don't get weary in well-doing. I don't believe that, that your playing, the parts that you have played has been in vain. I believe that God has intentionally used those two or three parts to stretch you. I believe God has used those two and three positions, you know, to stretch you and empower you the more. Yeah, I believe the stretching has been purposeful and will ultimately work in your favor. God knows that he can trust you with more now. He knows he can trust you with greater now because he's seen you work in this position and he's seen you work in that position and he saw where you were tired, but you kept on plowing through. He saw where you were tired, but not not only did you play your position, but you played to somebody else's position as well. And I'm praying for you tonight that God will strengthen your hands the more because I believe that you are in your reaping season and your personal victories are around the corner. I'm talking to somebody who's been playing two and three parts, two and three positions. Your personal victories are just around the corner because his word said that you shall reap if you faint not. Yeah, but at the end of the day, God expects for us to use our gifts, y'all. Huh. He expects for us to continue to edify the body, to edify the people, to build up the kingdom. First Peter 4 and 10. First Peter 4 and 10 says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. He says, do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all of your strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. Then he ends by saying all glory and power to him forever and ever. This is about the glory of God. This ain't about, this ain't about me. This ain't about our church. This is about the glory of God. And because he, we need to be able to come together so that he gets the glory. We need everybody working together. We need every part working together. We need every part participating. We need every part giving, every part serving, every part caring. We may be different. We may have different an, a different outlook on things. We may have different methods of doing things. Yeah, but a good team is one that's built on diversity. I didn't say adversity, but I said diversity. That means there are differences of gifts. There are different roles that we play. We have different methods, but the same message. Hear me. I need you to type that down in your timeline. We got different methods but we got the same message and we got to have the same goal. And that goal is to win souls for Christ. That, that goal is to, to please God in all that we do. Yeah, I know. I know some of you may be tired. I, I know some of you may be weary, but you got to understand the stretching has been purposeful. Yeah, you've had to work first base and second base. I get it. I understand. Sometimes you felt like you was the whole team by yourself. But I believe that the stretching has been purposeful because God wants to be able to trust you with more ground. <laughs> Woo! Come on, I just said something right there. I said, God wants to be able to trust you with more ground. If you think about a, a baseball diamond, you know, you, you, got, you got first base and you got second base and you got third base and then you got the pitcher's mound and then you got the one that's behind the hitter. You got the one, you know, that's the catcher in the back and then you got the outfielders and all of that. And you got to understand sometimes, you know, when the team is low, when the team is, 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 is working with, with least amount of players, sometimes you got to play second base and third base. Sometimes you find yourself you know, in between it all. And you got to, but that just mean God is just trusting you with more ground. And you ought to be glad about it. You ought to be glad that he can trust you. Yeah. And I just believe that the Bible says, if you are faithful over these things, if you're faithful over the few, he'll make you ruler over many. He'll give you stewardship over greater. Yeah. In other words, he'll give you victory, but you got to make a decision tonight. Are you going to operate as one? 
or are you going to be a team player? Are you going to continue to sit on the sideline or are you going to be a team player? Are you going to be the one that just kind of sits back and makes a lot of noise from the stands and ain't helping nobody do nothing? Or are you going to be a team player? Come on, if you're going to be a team player, I need you to begin to declare it tonight. I'm a team player. I'm a team player. Come on, I need you to be able to declare it tonight. I'm a team player. I'm getting back in the game. Yeah, it makes no sense for you to sit in the stands and watch two or three people play a whole game when you got the ability to at least stand by the plate. <laughs> Come on, when you got the ability to at least stand in the in the in the outfield. You know, they would put those of us, you know, that couldn't run too fast, they would put us out in the outfield and maybe, just maybe we could catch something. You know, you can at least stand in the outfield. Amen, somebody. But there's a part that everybody gotta play. And we can't continue to sit back and watch the body of Christ lose when we're called to win. Yeah, he's the captain of our souls. We're called to play on his team and win for his glory. But he needs more team players. Yeah, I hope somebody has heard my heart tonight. I hope somebody has heard the word of the Lord tonight. That we are many, but we are one. And it takes us working as one to win for the glory of God. Amen. And amen. I want to pray for you tonight. That's the word of the Lord. I want to pray for you tonight. And I want to pray that you really grab hold to this thing. I want to pray that you really grab hold to the fact that together, that together we are called to be winners. Together, everyone achieves more. Everyone achieves more as a team. And I, I pray, I pray that you will, if you've been sitting on the sidelines, I pray that you will consider getting back in the game. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you, dear kind Savior, for your goodness, your mercy, your favor. Thank you for forgiveness of sin tonight. Thank you for looking past our flaws, supplying needs. Thank you, oh God, for, oh God, forgiving us for when we did not do all that we could have done. Forgive us for being slack concerning our promises to you. Forgive us for being slack in the part that we were supposed to play. Forgive us for being out of position. Forgive us for being out of order. Forgive us for grumbling. Forgive, forgive us for complaining, oh God. And then, Father, we call upon your Holy Spirit to help us to gird up our loins and try it again. Oh, God, we call upon your Holy Spirit to strengthen our hands the more. We call upon your Holy Spirit to give us feet like hinds feet that we may not be moved. Oh, Father, I pray tonight in the name of Jesus that you will help your people to be steadfast and unmovable. Help your people, oh, God, to take the position that you've called them to to and work it like only you have called them to work it, oh God. I pray, God, that you will give them the strength and the passion, oh God, to put their hands to the plow and not look back, oh God. I pray, Father, that you will help us to find places and spaces to place your people that they may be able to work a good work for you, oh Father. And then, Father, I pray for those who have been, who have been serving and for those who have given their all. I pray, God, that you will strengthen them for this season, oh God, helping us not to look back to the seasons that have been before, but helping us to look to toward the goal and the season that's before us and the goal and the season that's upon us, oh God. Help us to make you proud, oh God. Help us to win for your glory, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we make ourselves available to you tonight. Use our hands, use our eyes, use our voices, God. Use this, the use our feet, oh God, to, to, to walk in your will, oh God. Use our hands to serve your people the more, oh God. Use our, every gift, Lord God, that you've given us. Use it for your glory, God. We make ourselves available to you tonight. And we just say, have your way. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in our lives. Oh God, we just bless you now. And we thank you. We thank you for just allowing us to be a part of this team. 
Thank you for trusting us with more ground. Thank you for trusting us with this season. Thank you for trusting us with ministry. Thank you for trusting us with our witness. Thank you for trusting us with these gifts, oh God. And God, we, we pray, God, that we'll, that we'll do nothing to, to bring shame to your name. We give you praise for it, even now, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Listen, I pray that you have been a hearer of the word. And I pray that you will position yourselves to be a doer of the word. Listen, we, we got to get back in this game and we got to go hard for Jesus. We got to go hard for him. We got to build up this team and we got to go hard for him because at the end of the day, I want him to be glorified. I want to make sure that this body of Christ wins in the end. We got too much negativity out there. We got too many people who are, who are bringing a blemish on his name. Somebody's got to stand for holiness. Somebody's got to stand for righteousness. And somebody has got to play to the end. Yeah, somebody's got to get back in there and play until the end. Listen, I pray that you've been blessed and I pray that you'll prepare to give tonight and so into this word. Listen, this is the first Wednesday night of the eighth month of the year. Those of you that can sow that $8 seed tonight, sow that $8 seed tonight. I want you to give tonight this, this, this new beginning. The number eight is the number of new beginnings. I want you to give a new beginning seed offering tonight. We are, we are starting fresh. We are starting new. We're starting a new, a new season. This is the, this is the top of a new ending. Come on. We're starting afresh. And so for those of you that can and will, sow a $8 seed tonight. Amen. Is, is, is an agreement that we're in a space of new beginning this month. We're building up our team. We're building up a new team in a new season. Amen. And I believe God is going to get the glory out of it. And we pray and we ask God's blessing for those of you that will hear my voice and give and sow that $8 seed tonight. Amen. For those of you that desire to give more, then be obedient and give more. Yeah. But I believe that's what the Lord is calling us for tonight. Or maybe you want to give 18 or maybe you want to give 28, but give something with an eight on it tonight. This is our month of new beginnings. And so this will be a new season for us as a team, as team EMBC. Glory be to God. Amen. All right. Listen, uh, let me remind everybody this coming Saturday, we'll be in prayer on the altar at 11 a.m. So let me encourage you to join us this coming Saturday at 11 a.m. for prayer. Um, we don't hold you long, 45, 50 minutes, you know, um, is normally our time. Sometimes we'll stretch to an hour, but no more than an hour. Um, but come for prayer. We begin every month in prayer, seeking the Lord for what he'll say to us and what he'll do through us um, this month. And so I encourage you to join me this coming Saturday. Don't forget that we are now collecting school supplies. So make sure you are are bringing in your school supplies. We are in desperate need of them. We have a big giveaway that is scheduled for August the 13th, next Saturday. We're giving away school supplies. We're giving away clothing. We'll have um, some health officials there that'll be doing some um, health screenings of different sorts, bone marrow screening and mammogram sign up and, you know, and all, it's all free. And so, but we need your help with the school supply side of it. So make Make sure you bring them on this coming Sunday. Um, but uh, and also, if you have you want to volunteer for our clothing giveaway, they're going to be working on sorting clothing next week. Make sure you sign up um, to or to get in touch with Miss Charlotte to sign up to help sort clothing or call the church office and find out what those hours are that they'll be sorting clothing. But we need your help. We need your teamwork. You know, we need to join in together so that we can continue to be a blessing to our community. Amen and amen. Listen, I love you all to life. And I don't know about you, but this word blessed me tonight. <laughs> As I was teaching it, it was blessing me. Amen and amen. So make sure if you did not share it, make sure you share with somebody um, as you get off tonight, because I believe somebody needs to be reminded that they are called to be a team player. Amen and amen. Listen, love you all to life. 
Can't wait to uh, continue our discussion on Sunday. Join us this coming Sunday for our communion Sunday. It is the first Sunday. Um, so join us at 10 o'clock a.m. for our in-person and online worship experience at 10 o'clock as we share in the Lord's communion. And again, we will continue um, our, our focus on team building and uh, we are encouraging you to be a part of that discussion. All right, y'all have an amazing night. Continue to be well, continue to be safe. And as the Lord says the same, I'll see you soon. Take care, everybody. Good night.